by the end of this video you'll be able to score easy points on the OBGYN questions of the step 2 CK. A 35 year old woman at 36 weeks of gestation presents in the emergency department with one contraction occurring every 2 to 3 minutes. The cervix is dilated at 6 cm and the fetal head is at minus 1 station. She's prepared for delivery with epidural anesthesia. During the next hour, the head advances to zero station. However, on the fetal heart rate tracing, this pattern is shown. As you can see, there is a uh, deceleration that occurs during the uterine contraction and finishes almost concomitantly. This means that we encounter an early deceleration. What is the best next step in the management of the patient? Vaginal delivery is the right answer, as early decelerations pose no risk for the fetus. At step 2 CK, you will have four types of decelerations in the questions. A deceleration is a decrease in the fetal heart rate for more than 15 beats per minute for less than 3 minutes. The type that we already encountered are early decelerations. Early decelerations are caused by the compression of the fetal head during the uterine contractions. This compression leads to a stimulation of the vagal tone of the fetus and thus decreases the fetal heart rate. On the fetal heart rate tracing, you will see that the nadir, which is the minimum point, is reached gradually. This means that it takes more than 30 seconds to reach it. In the case of early decelerations, the end of the contraction marks the end of the decrease in the fetal heart rate. There is no risk involved for the fetus, therefore the treatment is continuing the vaginal delivery. The next type of deceleration is represented by late decelerations. Late decelerations are also gradual, meaning that they will start pathophysiologically. Late decelerations are caused by uteroplacental insufficiency. This in turn will lead to fetal hypoxia and fetal acidosis. In the questions you may be asked what is the ultimate complication of uteroplacental insufficiency. Due to hypoxia and acidosis, the fetus may develop either hypoxic encephalopathy or cerebral palsy. On the fetal heart rate tracing, we will see that the nadir is also achieved gradually, meaning it will take more than 30 seconds to arrive to minimal point. The fetal heart rate decreases after the uterine contraction. This type of deceleration will take between 30 seconds and 2 minutes. The treatment for late deceleration is represented by intrauterine resuscitation. If intrauterine resuscitation fails, then emergency caesarean delivery is required. The third class of decelerations are represented by variable decelerations. There are two subtypes of variable decelerations. Firstly, there are intermittent variable decelerations. In this case, less than 50% of the uterine contractions are followed by fetal heart rate deceleration. On the other hand, we have the recurrent variable decelerations, where there is more than 50% of the uterine contractions followed with a fetal heart rate deceleration. In the case of variable decelerations, the nadir is achieved in less than 30 seconds. The cause of the variable decelerations is represented by the compression of the umbilical cord. In order to treat variable decelerations, we categorize into their subtypes. If it is an intermittent variable deceleration, then no treatment is required. If, by contrast, we have a recurrent variable deceleration, we have the same approach as in the case of late decelerations. First, we will start an intrauterine resuscitation process. If this fails, then we will do an emergency caesarean delivery. Prolonged decelerations are usually caused by 
the mother losing blood, such as in trauma or hemorrhage, by an inferior vena cava syndrome, or by the mother being hypotensive. These are sustained contractions that take from 2 to 10 minutes. Their aspect on the fetal heart tracing will be similar to late decelerations, and the treatment also will be similar to late decelerations. If this doesn't work, then we will pursue an emergency cesarean delivery. As previously mentioned, intrauterine resuscitation is one of the next best steps asked in step 2CK. Intrauterine resuscitation is a process that has three stages. Firstly, if we have late decelerations or recurrent variable decelerations, we will start with maternal repositioning. Maternal repositioning means that the mother is put on the left or the right side or on Trendelenburg position. We add a supplemental oxygen and some IV fluids. If by this time the patient is not stabilized, we will proceed further. This process consists of amnioinfusion. Amnioinfusion consists of introducing saline into the amniotic cavity. Thus, the compression of the umbilical cord is reduced. This objective is also common with the previous step. If the mother has more than five contractions in 10 minutes, then we also administer tocolytics. In the moment the second stage fails, we proceed with an emergency caesarean delivery. So a pregnant woman, G2P1, comes Come. at 38 weeks gestation to the ED. The cervix is dilated and the fetal head is at minus one station. She reported a headache from this morning and feeling the legs heavy. Her BP is 170 on 110. The dipstick test is a free plus. There is a demo of the legs. Up until now, we can summarize all the information into the fact that she has preeclampsia. The heart tracing shows like this. As you can see, we have a deceleration that occurs after the uterine contraction. It lasts more than 30 seconds to attain its minimum. Therefore, is a late deceleration. The mother is repositioned and given magnesium sulfate and antihypertensives. Finally, her condition improves. However, the fetal heart rate uh, pattern persists. After fluids repositioning and oxygen therapy, what is the best next step? Unusual complication is interplacental insufficiency. In the case of preeclampsia, delivery is the way to go. However, this patient has been stabilized. So the next step is to address the late decelerations. Since the um, intrauterine resuscitation failed, we have to pursue the next best step, namely amnioinfusion. Mm -hmm.